So um, guys, we want to talk about this red heifer thing. Um, so the Temple Institute announced yesterday that they are going to raise their own uh, red heifer. Now this is really important and really uh, significant, but it's important that we um, understand, guys, where this red heifer falls in the Daniel's prophecies and Daniel's timeline. So we want to look at this and we want to look at it in light of um, where the pieces fall, okay? So basically, guys, they've been looking for a red heifer to um, do this offering found in Numbers 19, okay? When you take a, a heifer and you, and you, and it's part of the purification uh, process um, of the temple, all right? Now, up to this point, they've been looking for one in America, you know, somewhere else, but they've decided to um, raise their own. They want to raise their own red heifer in um, Israel and um, have that from the land of Israel be the red heifer that cleanses the temple. Now, we know that cleansing the temple or killing an animal and offering its blood is an abomination because the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundations of the earth is the sacrifice himself but this is bible prophecy and we want to see where this um falls okay so um i also guys want to mention that um it was a year ago we were on this subject and there's another video i'll put in the description for where we look at it in light of um spiritually the red heifer represents the harlot okay so it is an offering and it's an offering to a different God. It's not an offering to the Most High. It's an offering uh, to dedicate the temple for a different Messiah. Let's just face it, that's what's going on. But it's exciting because we want to see what this information looks like in light of um, the tribulation period. Okay? So uh, what I've drawn here for you guys is a um, is Daniel's timeline. And how it works is let's just say, let's just go through this uh, hypothetically okay um, and let's say hypothetically that the tribulation were to start this year in September um, that would be this point right here okay and um, then it would go and have a halfway point right here so this is 1260 days so this is three and a half years and this would be what we call the time period of the trumpets okay and then uh, from here to here, this would be, it would, the tribulation would end when the Lord Jesus would defeat the Antichrist at 2,520 days. So this would be the time period of the bulls, okay? So we're going in our timeline, we're using our plumb line, you know, to measure, and, and, the, and the timeline is moving this way, okay? So we're just saying hypothetically that this is September 2015, okay? And then it would move through. All right. Now there's things in Daniel chapter 8 and 12 that give us uh, the information related to this timeline. So it tells us in Daniel 8 that from the time the host is trodden, or the Lord Jesus defeats the Antichrist, to the um, temple cleansed, or what we would consider the daily sacrifice, would be 2,300 days. So that would mean that the daily sacrifice, and again, the daily sacrifice here is taken away. So that would mean that the daily sacrifice would have to start. Okay, so this is, this period here is 220 days. That's seven months and 10 days. So that means the daily sacrifice would, would have to start, like, soon, like in September. Okay, so this is why we're watching all these things, to educate ourselves. So this hasn't started yet. So if it hasn't started, it hasn't, won't stop. Okay, but, um, but this we know that this is when the daily sacrifice will be taken away. And the little horn will do this, okay? So, um, but it also tells us in Daniel chapter 12 that the, from the time of the daily sacrifice to the abomination that makes desolate is 1,290 days. Okay, so this is the abomination of desolation. Now, the temple would have to be here for this to happen, okay? Right? And, um, and so that's why this is important, because you would have to have a red heifer to cleanse the temple before this happens, right? So now if we were to uh, 
take that, and we're, again, we're just saying hypothetically, if this were, if the tribulation were to start in 2015, then if we go from this point to the start of the tribulation, that's what we've done here, that's 1,510 days. So this is four years, two months, and 10 days, okay? That's when the abomination of desolation will take place. So what would happen is the red heifer would have to be offered um, before this, okay? So the reason this uh, red heifer is important, guys, is that um, the pregnancy time period of a, of a cow is just like a human. It's nine months. Then their uh, scrutiny pro process wouldn't begin until the red heifer was three years old, okay? So obviously now we're looking at a time period of just about four years, right? So you have a nine-month pregnancy and then at least, at minimum, three years. We'll just say, uh, for example, four years. So you can see that four years, um, you know, that red heifer would have to be born, like, really soon. It would have to be born, like, now, so that it would be born in, you know, nine months, and, and then it would be three years old, and then it would... So, so what I'm getting at, guys, is that obviously, because of the daily sacrifice and the red heifer, it's highly unlikely the tribulation period would meet all this criteria soon enough to start the tribulation in 2015, okay? But we want to look at these events in light because they're going on. And so, um, you know, I mean, the temple is going to be built. They're, they found gold in the mountains of Eliot that is going to fund the temple. I mean, they don't even, I mean, it's just amazing stuff, guys. This is all falling into play. Um, but I just want you to know that you know, the red heifer has to be born, and it takes four years, four years, right? And then it also takes four years um, for the beginning of the tribulation before the abomination, the desolation. That's why this is important, because we have to see um, where these things lie in um, Daniel's timeline, okay? So the daily sacrifice obviously is very important, because this is when it's taken away. So it obviously would have to start. Okay, so uh, so guys, these are exciting times, you know, uh, but we want to look at these events and what they're doing in light of um, where um, we are in prophecy, because they're saying that the red heifer has been offered in the past nine times, and their sages say at the tenth red heifer would bring in the messianic era. Well, we know that the messianic era that they're talking about is not Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the other God. That's who they're looking for. And he's going to um, appear in the temple and make it desolate. And so they're preparing to do that, but they think it's the Messiah. So, um, so that's why this red heifer is so significant. And their announcement now makes us know or makes it clear to us that it's we're looking at four years minimum. So that, you know, um, leads us to believe, guys, that, you know, this tribulation period, when this starts, these seven years, it, it wouldn't be in 2015. Um, uh, because all these other criteria have to be met, okay? So, uh, so guys, share this. I'm going to put in the description field the other message on the red heifer. It's a very, very strange thing, uh, eerie thing, it's kind of a mystery, but it is related to the harlot. You know, who is, you have to ask yourself if, you know, if these guys are setting up to, you know, worship the Antichrist, what is the force behind these things we're looking at? It's not good. All right, guys, so um, God bless you, and, um, you know, share this, uh, you know, get the word out. Uh, Lord is coming, and um, and we're, we're educating ourselves on his timeline, all right? Let's talk to you guys soon.